to the women's bedroom. Uh, this is one of the reasons because we exist to have this kind of event here. And I remember when Diana called me or emailed me to tell me, can we have that event at the women's building? And I say, of course. <laughs> Let's talk about money also. <laughs> yes, we have it here. Uh, I moved to the be I moved to United, sorry, I have been in panels the whole weekend and my voice is not responding well. But I moved uh, to United States in 1992, when I was in my late 30s. I'm from Puerto Rico, and a country that had been under imperialism from the 1400s, before under Spain, and now from 1898 uh, through the imperialism of the United States. And I remember I was involved in the struggle there. The first time that I was arrested, I was 12 years old. Mm -hmm. I'm from a small town and, but where everybody know everybody. And I remember I went to the judge in front of the judge. And he said, I cannot believe that the daughter of Doña Margot, that was the, nom <laughs> the name of my mother, has been doing the things. I cannot believe that. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I want to emphasize a little bit more about now about the work of the women's building, the beginning of the women's building. And I didn't know about this first conference that you talk about. I remember the one with Angela Davis because I was here. I was the receptionist. I started as a receptionist in 1992. But before talking about that, I want to thank, because I know many of you have been aware involved with the struggle of Puerto Rico for independence and in the struggle for the liberation of the political prisoners. How many of you were involved in, in that movement? Wow, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, and recently, and last summer, I was in Puerto Rico. I was, I go, we have this, we are mad with what happened in Puerto Rico, we, but we cannot, I cannot live without that island. I go there twice per year, and I was so lucky to be there in the summer when we have these big rallies and demonstrations, around 700,000 people. The amount of people, if we, if we, in terms of the population, if we have the same amount of people here protesting in the, in the street, we'd be around 30 million of people. Wow. And we were able to get rid of the government, and that the government, yeah. government yeah. was saying the imperialism, the interests of the United States in, in Puerto Rico, and in that movement, women, the LGBT queer movement, and young people were key to, to organize all this movement. Uh, I, I remember when I started uh, working here, I remember two stories. The women's building started in the 70s, and I think it was a revolutionary act for many reasons. You know, the idea to have any space to organize, to talk, to protest, to scream, to cry, or our own space, I think it, it was a revolutionary idea, and we see today we can have these kind of things. And, and what I remember two stories when I started here is when the women's building started, uh, the founders they did a lot of advocacy work supporting the families, women, and people that were living Central American because the civil rights, the civil wars. Uh, those governments in the end of the 70s and the 80s that were from the right were supported by the United States. And we know the story, I don't have to tell you the story. But because this involvement of the women's building in having events, I mean, you go to the GLBT Queer Historical Archive, you can see a lot of flyers, uh, all kind of information about all the events that are happening here at the women's building to support the people living in their countries and the support of the women's building to make San Francisco a sanctuary city. 
But as a consequence of that, because the women's building and the founders, we were doing that work, I was not here, but uh, there was uh, the FBI came to the women's building looking for all the files that we have here, and mm. we came here. And then the second, then one time, someone put a bomb at the front door of the women's building and the front door exploded. I don't know if you knew that. <laughs> I find out that from the beginning when, when I moved here. And I think that women and the women movement put the women face to the resistance to the new, this new administration, with the Women's March in Washington. And, and I think in terms, so we are non-profit organizations. We have some laws that we cannot do some kind of specific political work, but we have been expanding programs that are supporting all the immigrants and victims of the new laws and the new things that this administration is doing. We have a new program here, you know, about the separation of families, you know, about the children that have been mm. put in cages. And we have a big program that we started, we started some time ago, but now it's huge helping the families that have been separated on the border. And we have a huge case, it's a service, but it has a lot of importance. It has a, helping those children with finding mental health services for them, a, helping them to find a school, to find legal services. And the stories are terrible. I think that we need to find therapy, therapies that, <laughs> help our staff because when they come and they tell us the stories that they have hearing from these children they're they're terrible but i think that the women movement and our allies i know there are many men here is key to still the resistance against imperialism and again against these policies of this guy that is in power that i hope that doesn't win in the next elections, and we need to get out of boat. <laughs> and come and visit us. We love to give tours. We, I can tell you more about other things that we're doing here. We have a new advocacy program. We want to go back to the, we had great services, but we want to go back to the beginnings and the roots of the women's bill, and we're, we're doing a lot of political work and advocacy work. We have a new advocacy program that is around the issue of sexual assaults against women and girls. And we have here Vilma, that is a staff member, that is in charge of that. Yeah. Yeah. But every, I say everything is interconnected. Everything is interconnected. And come, I would love to give you a tour of the women's field. Thank you. <laughs>